Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to the new lecture of data communication and networking. So today we will study about chapter four, and the topic is digital to digital conversion. Okay, and the chapter name is digital transmission. So in this lecture we will see how we can transfer our data and in which kind or in which coding or in which type of wave we can send over data so in the next session we see how can hmm, how we can represent digital data by using a digital signal so signal is a wave so the conversion involved three techniques line coding block coding and scrambling the line coding is always needed block coding and scrambling may or may not be needed so the topic we will discuss in this section is line coding line coding stream block coding and scrambling so first of all we need to know about line coding which is so simple line coding simply convert a string of a ones and zeros one mean is a one bits value of bits and zeros digital data one and zero the digital data into a sequence of a signal that denote one and zero for example high voltage level plus o uh, could represent one and low voltage they will represent by zero what does it mean once you have a one so you need to represent your value in this form once you have a zero so you can represent your value by down sign it's just a simple representation line going where you can use a ones and zero and one is a symbol you use for the high voltage and zero use for the low voltage okay let's see this uh, figure line coding and decoding let's see we have a digital data in the form of zero one string so zero one zero one and so on and one zero one zero so first of all what we can do we will do some kind of encoding so we will encode kind of a data with it and the uh, digital data will convert into digital signal so now we have a digital signal conversion of our digital data to digital signal so zero represent a lower value one represent a higher value then zero then one and dot 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 then one represent a higher value zero represent the lower value then one is represent the high value then it will reach to a receiver receiver will have a decoder and decoder what can do whatever you edit in a sender side in the receiver side decoder will decode from the digital signal and at the result the receiver will receive the digital data whatever the sender was sending a digital data the same data same digital data will receive by a receiver okay so simple so coming to the relation between data rate and signal rate data rate is also called via speed of a data so data rate defined what is data rate data rate defined the number of a bit per second you know about bit per second so this is data rate is in a bit per second how many bit you can send in a one second this is called data rate it is often referred to the bit rate as well what is signal rate now so the signal rate is the number of a signal elements what number of signal element what is signal element this wave can be a signal element or this is the signal element so the signal rate is the number of a signal element sent in a second and it is measured in a baud so this is a unit and it also refer is to be a modulation rate so what is modulation modulation is kind of a uh, wave you have an analog modulation in this form you have a digital mod modulation in this form so uh, signal rate can also be a modulation rate so now we are coming to compare uh, signal element with a data element so let's see once we have a one data one data element mean we have just one bit 
it can be one or it can be zero so one element can represent one signal element one data element one data element represent one signal element what does it mean it means that once you have a one zero one so you know about a one one can be represented by a high voltage so this is your one so one data element and one signal element then we can have a zero so one data element and one signal element so then one then we have a one data element and one signal element so that's why <coughs> we use this thing so it doesn't matter here now so one is downward and zero upward but just keep in mind that it is written by one data element with the one signal element so now the second is and we have one data element but two signal element so it's up to line coding later on we will see how we can but just keep in mind we can be use a one data element with two signal element why we use it that so later on we will know we will reduce the dc component what is dc component so we will so dc component mean we we have once we have a, this this kind of a straight line this is called dc component so we need to uh, we need to be cut this DC component into a fluctuation where we can represent this into this kind of way because we don't need a DC component in a signal okay then we also have a uh, two data element with the one signal element we can also be represented by this as well and we can also represent four data element with the three signal elements so this is all your four data element and this is your three signal element so it's just for your information that we can represent one data element with the one signal element we can also represent one data element with two signal element we can also represent two data element with one signal elements so it's just for your info how we can be represent data element with the signal elements so the main goal is goal is to increase the data rate whenever you are increasing the data rate or bit per second while reducing the board rate so once you are increasing the data element so we need to be reduce the signal elements so now coming to the calculation of data rate and bot rate so data you know about uh, and you know about it how you can uh, calculate data rate bit per second so the now here we can derive the formula for the bot rate or a signal element so for the bot rate or a signal rate can be written by this formula so signal rate is equal to c multiply with the n multiply one divided by r so what is n n is a data rate or a bit rate c is the case factor we have a three different factor worst factor best factor and average factor what kind of factor it is later on we will know when we are sending our data in a medium so what is the condition of a medium it can be worse it can be good it can be bad so this kind of factor we will use for the transmission of a data so or is the ratio between data element and signal element so this is your formula basically so coming to the example a signal is carrying a data in which one data element is encoded as a one signal element so r is equal to one what he say one data element so r is the ratio of data element with the signal element so what is data element is one and what is the signal element is one so the ratio is one if the bit rate is 100 kbps what is the bit rate and bit. Uh, 100 kbps what is the average value of the bot rate or a signal rate if c is between 0 and 1 okay so it's the average value so you need to find it can be uh, 1 by 2 as well so we have a formula signal is equal to c and c is your factor so it, it, it is in between 0 and 1 so it like 0 plus 1 we take the average value of it always take the average value of a c so it can be 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 multiply with that data rate then what is your hmm, uh, what is your r so r is the 1 over 1 ratio because we already defined r is r is 1 so 1 by 1 is so your uh, signal rate is 50 kilobot okay so although the actual bandwidth of a digital signal is infinite the effective bandwidth is finite for a digital signal our bandwidth is basically infinite it's just like a theoretical theoretical concept but we always need effective bandwidth and the effective bandwidth is always be finite so keep in mind it so now coming to the uh, line coding so in a line coding before starting the line coding we have a two 
two three different kind of a concept the first concept is dc component so what is dc component so whenever you have a straight line so whenever you we have a straight line so let's say once we have a this kind of a straight line so this means this is a dc component and when we have a dc component it means all so the frequency is low frequency so we will have a low frequency for a dc so one thing keep in mind for a dc always our frequency is zero hertz and hertz is the unit of frequency okay so the concept behind the uh, dc component is when the voltage level remains constant for a long period of time so the voltage level remains constant for a long period of time so there is an increase in the low frequency what there is increase in the low increase in low frequency mean that our frequency low frequency like a z frequency zero is is for a long time so this is called so frequency of a signal so most channel one thing keep in mind most channel or a band pass and may not support the low frequency what is band pass we have a two three type of ch uh, channel one we have a low pass channel low pass channel is a kind of a channel which start from zero we start from zero frequency to up to some extent then we have a band pass we have a band pass channel band pass channel are those channel which start from the mid of the frequency and up to so on mid of frequency it, it means it not short from it may be start from 5 hertz it may be start from 10 40 50 60 and so on so low pass start from zero and band pass start from some ex, uh, from some value so it's called band pass so that's why he said that most channel are band pass and may not support the low frequency so this band pass is not supporting the low frequency because low frequency is not in the list of a band pass so for a date instant so this will require the removal of a dc component of a transmitted signal chara why we are uh, removing the dc component because uh, the channel is not supporting the low frequency so this is a low frequency basically if you can see here this is a low frequency a dc component this is a dc component this is a dc component for a date uh, purpose we need to remove or reduce the DC component so then coming to self synchronization synchronization means synchronization of a clock that the clock uh, towards the sender as well as towards the receiver will always be synchronized it's just like a same clock time if your timing is in a cobble is like a 12 p.m. from a sender side so the same time will be in the receiver in the receiver side 12 we must travel so this is byte of a synchronization bit synchronization time synchronization a clock synchronization so the clock and the sender and the receiver must have the same bit interval okay let's come to here now so you know about the dc component once let's see this one one then zero for a one we have a high value for a zero we have a low value for a one again we have a high value then we have a seen the high value because one is one so it means one is not going to be changed so the high value will be remain the same so when the high values will remain the same it means this is a dc component now okay then if you can see zero so zero then we have a zero again it will be remains then we have a zero it will be remain so this is a dc component again so it's it have a low frequency and low frequency is not supported by number of um, uh, band pulse channel so then we have one so this low frequency or dc component is making a disturbance in a signal so okay so it was about the uh, dc component now coming to effect of uh, synchronization once your sender's clock and receiver clock is not synchronized it's not synchronized so sender is sending a data of a one from this channel to from this point to this point okay this is sender data but this data is received by receiver which is in the this form so it means that the clock of a sender and receiver is not synchronized so there will be a disturbance there will be a uh, misinterpretation of a signal or there will be a some uh, error in the signal in the receiver side because the one here we can see up to this instance and here our signal is going to be misinterpret so that's why we need a synchronization in a sender and receiver side 
So now coming to the example of a data rate. In a digital transmission, the receiver clock, the receiver, the receiver clock is 0 0.1 percent faster. What he says, 0 0.1 percent. So 0 0.1 percent means 0 0.1 divided by 100, so which is equal to 0 0.001. Okay, 0 0.001. So the receiver clock is faster like 0 0.001, uh, faster than the sender clock. How many extra bit per second does the receiver receive if the data rate is 1 kbps? So your data rate is 1 kbps and your clock is synchronized, uh, your clock is faster than, receiver clock is faster than 0 0.001. So 1000 or 1 kbps multiply 0 0.0001 so it can it will be 1 so it mean your so 1000 bit is sending okay so and receiver bit is so 1000 already sent in the sending bit and one bit is more because the uh, receiver clock is faster so 1000 plus 1 is 1001 bit received so one extra bit per second it what is say when the clock is not synchronized toward the receiver end, so the receiver will receive mo uh, one bit extra in the receiver side. So this is the calculation. So another is for uh, so how many if the data rate is one Mbps again the same one. So multiply zero point zero zero one with the uh, one Mbps, then you will have an extra bit. Then add it with the one Mbps. So one thousand extra uh, bit per second will be receive simple multiplication okay so this is basically the uh, drawback of a unsynchronization of a clock so we, we always need to be a synchronized our system so now coming to the line coding stream in the line coding stream we have a different method the first method is is unipolar unipolar in a unipolar we have a non return zero concept then we have a polar in the polar we have non return zero return zero and biphase Manchester and differential Manchester concept then we have a bipolar in the bipolar we have a AMI and so generic code and so on so in this chapter we will cover these three uh, system with this three line coding scheme and we all so we always try to send our data in this form so we will see how we can convert our uh, data into a signal by using a line coding scheme so coming to the first uh, line coding scheme which is unipolar so in a unipolar we have just one pole what does it mean we just have a one positive value or one negative value just one value not two so all signal level are on one side of the time axis either above or below or can non return in a unipolar we have used non return zero nrz non return zero to scheme is an example of a this code the signal level does not return to zero what does it mean once we have a 1 and 0, so for a 1, we use a high values, for a 0, we will use lower values. So just we have used a 1 pole, unipole means just 1 pole, then still use one for a 1 high value, then again we have a 1, so need to be a positive value or a high value, then we have a 0, then we come to the this team. So this is a simplest line coding team, a very simplest, but it have a, some drawback. What is the drawback of this? drawback of this is that we have a DC component so there because of DC component so we cannot use a unipolar stream okay and this is the formula for the um, power so uh, we have to be use a uh, average power so initially zero then we have a one so it can be which divided by two then we square divided because we have a two value so but just forget about this one just you need to be keep in mind how we can and draw the uh, data in a digital signal form so this is the way so now coming to the second uh, line coding stream which is polar so in a polar we have a two uh, two method which is non return zero level and non return zero inversion so for a non return zero we so it's a polar for for we have a two pole positive up and down both of them we will use okay so keep in mind for a polar we can use plus value as well as we can use a minus value so the first uh, stream of a non return zero level which say that 
positive voltage for a one symbol and negative voltage for the other symbol for non return zero we can use a okay so non return zero so he said that for a positive we can use a one symbol for a negative we can use a another okay so for a zero we are using above it doesn't matter you can just consider it zero shows the uh, higher value and one shows the lower value and you can also be said that it one show the higher value and zero show the lower value it doesn't matter which one or you are using it okay so for a one we are using a high voltage so for a, for a zero we are using high voltage and for a one we are using low voltage okay so keep in mind so for a zero zero for for a zero we have a up value then come to the down then we have a zero then come to up so up then we have again zero so no need to be come down again remain the same so it will be here then again we have a one so come one will be here then one will be then one so it will be remain then we have one so it will be remain then we have a zero so for non return zero level so again you can see here we have a dc component so dc component we have a low frequency and most of a channel we have it's a band pass and band pass is not supporting a low frequency signal so that's why again we have a drawback here drop what is a drawback drawback is a low frequency component which is available in the which is consists in the signal non return zero level another we have a steam non return zero inversion so you know about inversion to convert it so what does it the change or the lack of a change in the polarity determine the value of the symbol what does it mean for example one symbol invert the polarity and zero does not I mean whenever you have a one so one will going to change the polarity first of let's see an example and zero does not so let's see we have a zero so zero will be the remain same then we have a one so one will be here okay if you can see what is the or next will really zero and we say zero does not change the so zero will remain the same okay then we have a zero so zero does not change so it will be zero then what we have a one so for a one we need to invert that because we consider that one symbol invert the polarity so for a one it is going to be invert now so it one again we have one then it again will be invert then we have a one then we need to be invert then what we have then we have a zero so for a zero we so does not change the polarity so it will be remain the same so in this again we have a one another component of one dc component here which is available so again we have a drawback of a dc component or low free uh, low frequency component so if you can see here no inversion next bit is zero and inversion f the next bit is one so hope you got the uh, concept behind the polarity so just have uh, some notes you need to be noted in a non return zero level the level of voltage determine the value of a bit because how many we have a level so it will determine the number of a uh, bits because per level we have a one bit so that's a uh, in non return zero inversion the inversion or the lake of the inverted determine the value of bits so then non return zero a uh, level and non return both have a uh, average signal rate which is n by 2 then it again a note that non return zero level and non return zero inversion both have a DC component problem and a baseline wandering. So it is worse for the non return zero level. Both have a no self synchronization, no error detection. So both are relatively simple to implement. So again, the same thing is is in a unipolar we had a DC component. So the same DC component is still exists in the non return zero L and non return zero I. So that's why again we cannot use it. So coming to the example example 4.4 he says a system is using non return zero inversion to transfer one mbps data rate so your uh, bit rate is one mbps what are the average signal rate we need to find a signal rate or a baud rate and minimum bandwidth so we have a formula of a signal rate c multiply with n multiply with r so c is your case factor so we always take a average factor so average factor is always one by two okay which is uh, in between 0 and 1 so then we have a c we have a c value 1 over 2 we have a n which is 1 mbps and then we have a r what is r r is the signal element and data element so when we have a one signal element one data element in the graph so that's why we are using one so result is 500 kilo baud so if you see that signal element signal element is based on uh, bandwidth based on your bit 
so from uh, uh, start from a uh, one bit first bit to last bit so so uh, we can consider it as a bandwidth as well so the bandwidth is also be a 500 kilo hertz so one thing keep in mind that kilo baud baud is the unit of a signal rate and the bandwidth unit of a bandwidth is hertz if you remember the chapter 3 where we find in the bandwidth of a signal so that's why it's a simple example so now coming to the third line coding stream which is polar return zero so the return to zero use three voltage value plus zero and minus i i will tell you how it can be so each, each symbol has a transition in the medial each symbol have a transition in the medial uh, either from high to zero or from low to zero this team has more signal transition transition means it will be changed if, if you can see it is going to be changed at any point so it means there is no dc component now so and therefore require a wider bandwidth no dc component or a baseline wandering self synchronization is needed more complex it is use a three voltage so what does it mean once we have a zero bit once we have a zero bit and this is your a range of a signal element once we have a zero bit and zero bit start from this position so we have a transition in the middle then it will be end up if then we see we have a one we have a one so one will be up and it will be transition in the middle and it will receive the end then we have a let's see then we have a one then it will be transition in the mid and it will be f then we let's see we have a zero so it will be start transition in the middle then it will be reached to here so according to this concept look at the example we have a zero one zero zero one so for a zero it will start then in the middle it will be transition then it will be so then we have a one so for one we have higher value so it will be one then it will transition in the middle and it will be end then we have a zero so for a zero we have a transition in the middle it will be again reached then we have a zero for a zero we have a trans it will be come down then transition we get zero so that's why it come and be down then we have one so just keep in mind that we have a transition in a middle of a bit keep in mind it so it will be so simple so but it's a bit uh, complex how we can dress to a bit complex now so this is about this was about a polar return zero okay so now coming to the uh, polar biphase or we can say the Manchester and differential Manchester stream. So for a Manchester stream it will be just consist a combination of a non-return zero level and return zero stream. And also every uh, symbol has a level transition in the middle from high to low or low to high. So I am telling you once you have a uh, data elements zero so it's your data. So using a Manchester stream for a zero we are using this kind of a symbol and for a one we are using this kind of a symbol. So once we have a zero so use this one. So for a zero we are using this one and use a transition in the middle. Okay so it's reached to this one. So then we have a one so for a one we are using this symbol. So from this point it will start and it will read then we have a zero and for a zero we are using this symbol so it will start and the middle will be make a transition transition because of return to zero stream because it's a combination of both then we have a zero so once we have a zero so we need to be come up first because zero start from upper value so for we need to be come up then start in a middle transition then we have a zero and you know zero start from down so it will start from here okay then we have a one so we need to be come down first because one start from a down and turn in the middle so this is the way how we can draw the Manchester chain okay this is simple we just simply keep in mind for a zero we are using this symbol for a one we are using this symbol then coming to the differential Manchester so for in a differential monster we are using the combination of a non return zero inversion and return zero stream so same but keep in mind one thing about differential Manchester that the bit one first bit it's up to you you can make it uh, by a reference so you can also take a zero by upper value and you can also be uh, take a zero by lower value it's your reference point it's up to you it's you can start it from the up you can start it from a down it's the first thing the second thing is you can consider it by yourself you can be considered this value you can be considered by it yourself so I'm saying that 
when the next bit is one when next bit is one so there will be no inversion okay for if next bit is one there will be no inversion f and also consider that if the next bit is zero so the bit is going to be inverse so how it can so first bit is zero okay so i am taking a reference point so zero start from this to this point it's like just like inward so what now the next bit is one so what is the next bit? next bit is one and for the uh, one we need to we don't have a inversion so it will be keep remain the same and just in the middle it will be transition okay so up to this point it's okay then what we have then we have a zero and for a zero we have a inversion so for me we need to be go up then in the middle it will be transition and will be reached here then now we can see what is our next bit next bit is zero and for a zero we have inversion again so go up and in the in the middle will be transition it will be richer then we will see what is our next bit next bit is one and for the one we don't have inversion so keep remain in the same direction and in my middle you have to be transition then reach to here okay then what is the next bit next bit again one so for one we don't have an inversion so keep remain in the same direction in the middle you need to have a transition and reach so this is a basically a difference between a manchester and differential manchester okay so hope you guys get the uh, concept behind the manchester and differential manchester so again we have uh, some note for Manchester differential Manchester. so in a manchester and differential manchester encoding the transition at the middle of the bit is used for synchronization why we are going to do a uh, transition in the middle is because of synchronization synchronization in the sender side synchronization in the receiver side so the minimum bandwidth of the manchester and differential manchester is two time date of non return zero it's uh, known by in the non return zero we have just one uh, one component in a whole for a whole bit and in the Manchester differential Manchester we distribute a bit into two form like in in the transition like start like this way it transition like in this way two data uh, two single element for a one data okay just like so <clears throat> again coming to the uh, another line coding scheme which is bipolar and we can also is ami and sodenary code so ami alternate mark inversion which is more important and mostly we are using ami so coming to the bipolar or ami or sodenary so yet again it's use a three uh, voltage level plus zero and minus okay then uh, one another thing that voltage level for a one symbol is at zero and the other alternate between plus and minus what does it mean so keep in mind just so we are saying that set of bipolar alternate mark inversion or ami the zero symbol is represented by zero voltage zero symbol is represented by zero volt so zero is zero so it will be represented by zero voltage and this one symbol alternate between plus and minus what does it mean so initially zero present by zero then we have a one so one can be represented by positive value okay it's your positive value one is the first one then we have a zero for a zero we have a zero voltage zero voltage then we have a one so what was the previous one it was up so it will need to be invert now because it's a alternate mark inversion so the next uh, one will be alternate so it was up so the next value of one will be it will be invert now then zero let's see this is again one so what was the, your previous one previous was down so it will be up now so this is called alternate mark inversion concept okay so now coming to ordinary so ordinary line coding scheme is the reverse of ami so how it can be so we are saying that for a zero we are using a high voltage for a one we are using a zero voltage so for a zero we are using high voltage then for a one we are using zero voltage okay then what is our next bit next bit is zero so what was the previous bit of a zero it was up so for a next is it will be down now because it's a inversion of a um, ami so again we have a zero so it will be invert then we have one one will be a zero bit then we have a zero so see the uh, loss previous zero bit uh, shape which is up so it will be down so if we see that what our next bit is zero let's see 
so next week so it will be again inward because the previous one is down so it will be up so this is the uh, method how we can draw a data into a digital signal form using a line coding scheme so this is simple method how we can use it out so bipolar it is uh, it is better alternated to non eternal zero has no dc component has no self synchronization because long runs of a zero result is no single transition while long uh, runs of zero mean long runs of zero if you have a dc component uh, so if you can see the previous one in the zero comp zero was considered to be a zero so zero was considered to be a zero so when it's considered to it means it, it, it is no signal transition so that's why it said that no signal transition then it, no error detection so what is error detection and so next chapter i will explain it how we can find the error detection then how we can uh, correct the error so later on we will uh, study about it okay so this is basically a summary of a unipolar uh, bipolar and so on in a unipolar we use non neutron zero non neutron zero l non neutron zero i and biphase and in a bipolar we use amir so then and so on and these methods just ex so just leave it you know, for the uh, next lecture so we will see what we can do about this uh, multi level or multi line stream so it was your lecture so you guys can watch it out if you have any question you can comment so kindly subscribe my channel like my video and if you have any questions so mention it on the comments so thank you for your time see you in the next lecture